Good morning, everyone. Yes, I didn't do one yesterday. <laughs> I went to house it. I thought it was just going to be for today. By the time I found out, I was going to stay tonight too. <laughs> I was already there, and uh, it's really interesting. I didn't have my Bible with me, and. Uh, I felt a bit lost. I wondered in the past when I would see people every so often with a Bible under their arm, wherever they went, this and that. And uh, now I know how that feels like uh, to have your Bible always with you and then not. <coughs> yeah, well, uh, interesting experience. Yep, I felt a bit lost. I was like, ah, I should have just, I should have just prepared for it. There was a possibility, right? Didn't miss anything else uh, that I didn't bring for an overnight stay. Didn't. But the Bible I missed. Yes. So I ended up watching The Chosen. <laughs> I've never seen that one. There's only eight episodes on Netflix. I wonder why. I, th I know there's 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 more. Oh, something happened somewhere. And uh, yeah, again, I don't know how that works. I just think everything else you can get on Netflix. I want to see more of the chosen. <laughs> anyway, it was good. Ah, it's just like. Every time I watch anything with Jesus, <laughs> need tissues for the happy moments and not so happy moments. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Amazing to me again, just watching something and on how that man just. touches you. It's done. doesn't matter in what form or shape you come across Jesus. You are going to be touched. What an amazing man. Again, people need proof. Just saying. It's all in the pudding. Okay, let's get going here. I don't have much else to say. This morning, it's peaceful right now. Oh, yeah, the people here already. Okay, it was Sunday night, so I guess some places they had their parades early, and I could see some of the fireworks right from here, mm -hmm. somewhere happening. And I watched, and I could see, like, half of them. You know, I could have gone up on the porch and seen more, but why not a fan of fireworks? Never been. I looked around here and I saw all the little lightning bugs and I got mad. What is it with me? I enjoy that more than seeing them. Whatever they shoot up into the sky in all different colors and right. I don't know. Just doesn't doesn't excite me. Doesn't. I don't have to be a part of something like that. And I'm watching our animals, the two dogs here. One of them was gone. I don't even know where she was hiding. And and uh, and Coda stuck right with me. And yes. Yeah. And the animals aren't a fan of fireworks either. The booms more than the right the show, the light show. That go with it. <clears throat> Going, yeah, well, there you go again. <laughs> I got my answer right there. Why do I not enjoy fireworks? I much more enjoy the show of the lightning bugs. I, yes, I can have every night here right now. Anywho, and the animals, they're not, they're not responding in the positive to them either. Oh, so don't have them? Oh, no, no, I'm just saying. That's just how I feel. 
All right, let's get going here. <laughs> Might offend someone again. All right, we are in Judges 4. Deb no, no, wait a minute. That's not true. Excuse me. Judges 3. I was just thinking, wait a minute, I didn't read that wrong part above. Judges 3. These are the nations which Yahweh allowed to remain by their means to put all those Israelites to the test who had not experienced any of the Canaanite wars. This was only to instruct the, instruct the Israelites' descendants to teach them the art of war. Those at least who had not experienced it previously. <laughs> <clears throat> so if this is true, then this means that some tribes were not involved in all the killing and all that. That needs to be remedied. I get it. Okay. The five chiefs of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hittites, who lived in the range of the Lebanon, from the uplands of Baal Hermon to the pass of Hamat, they were used to put Israel to the test and see if they would keep the orders which Yahweh had given their ancestors through Moses. The Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, the Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They married their daughters, they gave their own sons to their daughters, and they served their gods. Okay, not much to say there. I guess they liked the... Daniela fireworks they had okay now brings all kinds of stuff to mind right now people like other people's fireworks okay history of the judges super chapter three already history of the judges oh, let's see how long this is oh it's a long one too about the same. Interesting. 21. 21 this time. Mm -hmm. A. Othniel. 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 I guess that's their names. The Israelites did what is evil in Yahweh's eyes. They forgot Yahweh their God and served Baals and Asherahs. Then Yahweh's anger blazed out against Israel. He handed them over to Cushan Rishatim, king of Edom, and the Israelites were enslaved to Cushan Rishatim for eight years. The Israelites then cried to Yahweh, and Yahweh raised for the Israelites a deliverer, who rescued them, Othniel, son of Kenaz. Oh, yeah, right, Caleb's younger brother. That's the, let me think. Let me think. Didn't he get, what did he get? Was that, was that the one that won something? Yeah, and then got Caleb's daughter, right? The spirit of Yahweh was on him. He became judge in Israel and set out for war. Yahweh delivered Cushan Rishaitam, king of Edom, into his hands, and he triumphed over Cushan Rishaitam. Time. The country then had peace for 40 years. Atniel, son of Kenaz, then died. Oh. Okay. Ehud. So... Othniel wasn't really a judge. Sounds more like he's a warlord, a general. All right. Oh, because he went. All right. He followed God's instruction. Oh, okay. Ugh, I don't know what to say to any of this anymore. Be Ehud. People come up with all kinds of things. The golden calf. Somebody else is reading the Bible, and I was told that 
she came up with the idea that the golden calf, I guess she isn't as far as I am yet, is a, an actual person now living on earth. Yeah, true mother. True mother is the golden calf. No. Now that's the same group that called her all kinds of other things and this and that. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, okay, things don't stick, so come up with something else. All right? Yes? Which reminds me now, <laughs> that's why I forgot my Bible and had to watch that show. I got you, got you. When, when you meet Jesus, when you truly meet Jesus, right? Again, talking to Jesus, for many people it is that way. It, they, it sticks. Not for all of them, of course. Yeah. Times are hard. People are looking for something, find some miraculous thing in their life. Difficult to explain to anybody else, really, because it's their life. They know their life, right? And they know what happened. And for a short amount of time, they're all elated. We call that a spiritual high, right? Then when things go good again, right, one easily forgets. What did you just experience? Keep that in your heart. Don't forget. Right? Don't forget. Right? Yes. And then, of course, right? what did Jesus always say to the ones that he healed or this or that with these miracles? Now go tell the people. Right? Yes. Don't forget. It gets kind of hard to forget when you're blind and suddenly you can see <laughs> who was instrumental in that. <coughs> <coughs> you're lame and you suddenly can walk. You're going to forget that you couldn't walk for years and years and years. Again, who was instrumental in helping you get on your feet? Or that leper. So sad. Okay, that was one part you chose, and I could see how there's different types of leprosy. A lot of people don't know that, and the most common ones actually not uh, contagious. This one may have been. I don't know, and on how you get sick like that, you become an absolute outcast of society. Yes? Well, what were the Jews taught about you know, skin stuff and all that? And, interestingly enough, at Jesus' time, right, where were all the uh, preparations, where were all the instructions that God gave about these diseases and things? They're not in place anymore. They're completely gone, it seems like. I guess we'll find out more, but that's what it seems like. So nobody is following God's directions anymore, or guidelines, right? Yes. So keep, right? when you have an experience like that when, with Jesus, it's, it sticks. Yeah. It, all right, again, that's easy for me to say in a way. And I try to understand people who have these experiences first. Right? Yes, there is, all right, all right, all right. I know I'm wearing off, but this seems to be important. And what I wanted to say isn't so important anymore, right? Yeah, it's, it's the guidance from spirit world. It's just as it is. They know me well enough. There is, I'm not going to name the name, a very uh, prominent person uh, in the world who has this amazing way of communicating with people, I think, and is doing it really from the heart to mind with the knowledge that he has. And, uh, and rather than every time he goes on a podium or whatever, you know, having a piece of paper like a lot of people, where you can't keep your, mind, your head together, don't, you don't know what you want to talk about. If you really know what you're talking about and you're standing in front of a bunch of people, then you can do this without a piece of paper that has the whole speech on it. You can. And if you can't do that, you shouldn't be up there. 
because then you're doubting your own, right? in a way. Right? Either you really are not qualified, or you're doubting your own qualifications to actually even do that. Yes? Now, oh, am I against a, a little uh, uh, certain points that you want to address so that you stay on track? Yep, I'm good with that. But when I have to listen to a live person that stands there and reads off uh, a piece of paper, you have already lost me. <laughs> not interested now. Because the person's not connected, is not connected to the message. And that's my personal belief. So this guy is really, was really amazing. He would go walk up and down the, the stage and go, I'm, I'm right here and I'm having all these thoughts coming and I'm thinking and I'm sharing and, and he's and right then and there. He would give what there was to give and it was always amazing to me. Then the person went, had a rough few years huh? and... Uh, Again, how that happens to someone like, I have no idea, but it did. Maybe there was a reason for it, because he wasn't a believer. Okay. Kind of was, but, eh, you know, included some things about it, but, yeah. And then had an experience and completely became a believer. As complete as he was on stage when he presented his point of views, his, in many ways already, even without uh, being a believer, this or that, he gave God's point of view in many different areas, especially what man's psyche. Yes, okay. <clears throat> and uh, and then he came back on, and he had this experience, shared all that, and then he started to. First, the same, he, he had to, it's almost as if he needed that time, eh? a little different than someone that, okay, to get it, like, it back into the groove of what he had been doing, the gift that was given to him, right, when it came to oral presenta presentation. And so he did, you could tell, he was reading off the computer a bit, and again, he lost me. That He did too. I'm going, well, I'll wait. I can wait until you find, that, until you step in the footsteps of Jesus. When it came to, uh, yes, giving. Uh, and sure enough, it took him a short amount of time, back at a year, maybe a year and a half, and I could literally see his spiritual growth. I mean, it was phenomenal. And what he's giving now, it's it's so much more, even more rounded. Uh, yes? Yeah. Amazing. So a leper. Yeah. Amazing for me to see, uh, yes, a person's growth like that. And uh, so, yeah, so what about me? Well, I had my experiences, but they just solidified everything, right, for me. But I'm not a person who i never experienced on what it is to be without Jesus or God. I just man, the direction given, I needed to find. I had to find. I had to find that. And I found it, yes. I think it's the same here for the Israelites. It's they have to. It's not like they don't know. It's just the direction's gone totally lost. The guidance isn't there anymore for them. They're just using it now uh, towards others. That's what's happening. And yes, so many things in the world are exactly the same way. Uh, there's a lot of things are going on. They have no hands and feet. They just don't. No eyes to see, no ears to hear. <laughs> yes. Just being used. Used against. It's a different type of warfare, maybe. I don't know. Sounds like to me. Okay, all right. I didn't know what I'm going. I thought I had nothing to say. So, Othniel here. Mm. Interesting where they put their trust afterwards. Be a hood. Again, the Israelites began doing what is evil in Yahweh's eyes, and Yahweh strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel. <laughs> okay. 
since they were doing what is evil in Yahweh's eyes. Eglon, in conjunction with the sons of Ammon and Amalek, marched on Israel, beat them, and captured the city of palm trees. The Israelites were enslaved to Eglon, king of Moab, for 18 years. Okay, what are we talking? All of Israel? It sounds like only the city of palm trees, right? He captured that one. So some Israelites. Which tribe was it? Who uh, settled there? Ugh, I'd have to go back and check. <laughs> The Israelites then cried to Yahweh, and Yahweh raised a deliverer for them, Ehud, son of Gera, a Benjaminite. He was left-handed. Oh, I'm left-handed, too. Yeah, I wonder why they, why they, why do they mention that he was left-handed? <coughs> Surely he wasn't the only left-handed person at that time. <laughs> the Israelites appointed him to take their tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Ed, Ehud made himself a dagger, it was double-edged and a foot long, and strapped it under his clothes on his right thigh. He presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. This Eglon was a very fat man. Having presented the tribute, Ehud sent away the men who had been carrying it. But he himself, on reaching the idols, which are near Gilgal, went back and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. The king commanded silence, and all his attendants withdrew. Ehud went up to him. He was sitting in his private room upstairs, where it was cool. How detailed this story is. Ehud said to him, I have a message from God for you, O king. The latter immediately rose from his seat. Then Ehud, reaching with his left hand, drew the dagger he was carrying on his right thigh and thrust it into the king's belly. The hilt, too, went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade. Since Ehud did not pull the dagger out of his belly again, Ehud went out through the privies, having shut and bolted the doors of the upstairs room behind him. Hmm. I'm... Okay. That was God's... All right. Well, I... They wrote it down the way they wanted to, I guess. The judges. I guess that was judgment for that king. Well, when he mentioned God, though, that king stood up and... Uh, so... <laughs> it's an odd one. I guess that king had his experience with... Right? Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know what to say to this. Doesn't sound like God to me, not the one I know. Sounds like the other God. Uh, I find it interesting that neither in Othniel nor Ehud does it uh, specify what were the qualifications of these two. What did they really follow God? Did they really, you know, I mean, why? And were they really, were they not just taking things, matters into their own hands in a way? I don't know. When he had gone, the servants came back and looked. The doors of the upstairs room were bolted. They thought he is probably covering his feet in the inner part of the cool room. They waited until they became embarrassed, but still he did not open the doors of the upstairs room. Eventually, they took the key and opened the door, and there lay their master dead on the ground. Meanwhile, Ehud had got away past the idols and made good his escape to safety in Seirah. Once there, he sounded the horn in the highlands of Ephraim, and the Israelites came down from the hills with him at their head. And he said to them, Follow me, because Yahweh has delivered your enemy Moab into your hands. So they followed him, seized the fords of the Jordan against Moab, and allowed no one to cross. On that occasion, they beat the Moabites, some 10,000 men. Oh, again, always 10,000 men? That must have been a, their favorite number. Must have been a lot. Although, and seasoned fighters, and not one escaped. Oh, all tough. All tough and seasoned fighters, and not one escaped. That day Moab was humbled under the hand of Israel, and the country had peace for 80 years. Okay. C. 
Shamgar. After him came Shamgar, son of Anat. He routed 600 of the Philistines with an ox goad. No idea what that is. He too was a deliverer of Israel. Generals. Sounds like generals came into being. Oh. Who took care of things? There. No idea what God has to do with any of it. Interesting on how detailed that one story is, right? Yes? Yeah. Well, I don't know. He was all by himself. So, somebody wrote the story down, right? Yes. There all could only be one account available for that, and that would be uh, Ehud's, right? That was his name, Ehud. Because everybody else died. Before they could write anything down, I assume. Yes. Uh, I don't know. No idea. No idea. But it seems like that the Israelites didn't follow God's guidance. Did they ever? One wonders. So much killing, so much bloodshed going on within, yeah, one, well, also it doesn't say, so they were enslaved for so many years and then they were enslaved for so many years again, again, was it just different tribes? Uh, and it doesn't say anywhere that then these guys, these judges that are named here, in a sense, were leading then the Israelites back to where they needed to be. No, 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 no it doesn't, kind of doesn't say. Uh, if they also, they've been slaves for 80 years. They, okay, so Ehud was whom to the ones that were enslaved there? Uh, I'm not, I don't know, it doesn't say, it's kind of a bit of a mess. Again, all we hear is the, what they conquered, oh, first on, yes, and then they wailed to Yahweh, Yahweh did this, so that they could, <laughs> but it doesn't say anywhere that the Israelites amended their ways, no way, it doesn't say, yes, I don't know. No idea how that works. What I do know works is that it's interesting to me on how the New Testament, in a way, again, with Jesus in it, um, what a guide that is to people for as long as they allow it. But don't forget. It's interesting watching that show, and I know it's like, I, I guess for me to, oh, wow, this is, uh, this is how they are presenting the story, no doubt. Uh, I don't know how it is for other people, for me to focus on anything that Jesus would say, anything that he would do. Okay, okay what's, what's he going to say to this? What's he going to do about that? Uh, fascinated me again pulled me completely in and the thing is what I found is that you know when Jesus says the Father is in me and I'm in you and you're in me right? yes kind of thing I says okay how does that work and while I was watching this show I really felt the connection in a way on what that meant because when you start to teach, you try, right? Yes, about the heart of God, just like Jesus did. Then, uh, then you, you, there is this very special 
connection there. Not just connection, but you see yourself in the other person, right? Yes? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I had, again, this is good. Forgot my Bible, so I'm going to watch something that has the Bible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of the Bible. It's good. There wasn't enough. made me want to go and read up more on Nicodemus. You know that he'll be showing up here too. Hey. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, that's the end of three. Sure is. History of the judges. Oh, it's just a little one and I today. The world sounds so busy out there. It does. I don't like conflict. I must learn more from Jesus. That's a good source to learn from. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I need to go find out. Oh uh, no, there's an app that you can get for free and watch The Chosen. Gonna see how that works. Uh, maybe I could put it on here. Oh, there you go. Yes, saw that already beforehand. Maybe I needed to see that ahead of time, a few days ahead of time, right? Yes, before. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay, it's a good one if you haven't seen it, The Chosen. It's well done, I have to say. It's really well done. Oh, is it the truth? Well, seems to be enough of the truth in it. Yes, it's well done, I have to say. All right, all right, all right. That's all I have to say today. Yes? Yeah. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. Oh, tomorrow is 4th of July. Independence Day for the United States. Interesting history this country has. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you, and I will talk to y'all another time.